today we actually are gonna come and talk about mr marcus houston now we really haven't heard from marcus houston in a while i mean if i think about it last time I heard about Marcus. He was uh, singing R and B. He was talking about some "Let's Get Naked." I can't really remember any of his other cuts. Um, I know now that he is allegedly a Jehovah's Witness. That he is walking around serving mud pies, serving bean pies, knocking on people's doors, and getting cussed out every Saturday and Sunday. Well, fuck you. And hollering about how there will only be 144,000 people to make it to heaven, even though all the dirt he done done. I don't think he's gonna be one of them. No shade to my Jehovah's Witnesses out there. That's just a little joke. But seriously though, Marcus Houston. Is going viral, not for his alleged old uh, uh, behaviors of, you know, sticking his uh, uncircumcised peen or in Rasby. It's because of his relationship with his wife and the age gap, right? And so he did a, a interview with TV One Uncensored and you know and one of the biggest controversies, at least one that he will actually address on camera, is his relationship with Maya Houston, aka Maya Dickey, aka Mayana Juanita Dickey. All right, his current wife. Me and my wife's situation is a little different, you know, how we were how we met. You know, through mutual friends and everything like that. You know, I, when I met my wife, she was 17. So, you know, we had no really conversation and no really connection until, you know, she was of age. And, you know, it's, people don't understand it. And I got a lot of, of course, I got a lot of backlash for marrying someone that was 19. And, you know, when we did finally start to talk, I was like, this woman is like me. And she was just like, when I would talk to her, she just, for one, we had a spiritual connection. And I feel like that's the most important thing. We both love God. We both love Jehovah. And that was key. And being able to start being around her and talking to her and talking to like, we got it, we, we, we connected to music. And, you know, uh, her spirit, her kindness, her heart reminds me a lot of my mom. And just, you know, we connected on so many different levels. He said a spirit in her heart reminds him of his mom and they connected on so many different levels. Shout out to the neighborhood talk for that actual audio clip. There were several things in that clip that actually stuck out to me. And after I actually watched the full TV one uncensored episode, I will come back and give a full review. If you want me to just let me know down below. So now he said, apparently he met his wife at 17, but they didn't talk or have too many dealings until she was of age. But then he actually like married her at 19 years old. And so they really didn't date that long. They really didn't get to know each other that long, which I just kind of find funny that he, as a grown man uh, at 39 years old, would marry a young woman, a girl that had just became legal, who he really didn't know that well. What it really gave is that he had been knowing her for years, waited until she actually got legal, and then just made it official. Another thing that stuck out for me is that he said there is so much alike, and I'm just trying to figure out how a 39-year-old man and a 19-year-old girl or so much alike. Would a man 20 years older than her have in common? Unless we're finally gonna admit to the fact that there are a lot of grown ass men out here that are emotionally immature, which is why when they meet a young girl who is young enough to be their damn kid, they get along very well and they're like on the same accord and they think the same and they like the same things because the grown ass man never grew up and he wants somebody that he can groom and, and, and basically mold into what he wants for him until she finally comes into herself 10, 15 years down the road and then leaves him and then he's an old man and he can't find nobody else. But anyway, I said, let me dig into this a little bit because... I just really need to know the facts of this situation because some in the pudding ain't clean. So when I looked it up, I said, okay, Marcus Houston is 41 years old. According to Google, now you know these celebrities can have their Google age fixed. I mean, hell, even if you go to Lori Harvey's Google Schmoogle or her Wikipedia, it says she's Steve Harvey's daughter and she didn't come out of his nuts. <laughs> She just got adopted by him later. Now, it says he's 41, born August 4th, 81. And it says Maya is 
Well, now she's 22. With that being said, they actually got married August of 2020, you know, right in the middle of the pandemic. After they got married, it wasn't too long before the baby came along, Zora Houston, or Zara Houston. She had that baby right away, and so now she's 22, he's 41, and the baby's like two or three or something like that. Y'all do the math. I really don't feel like it. There now, was proof on Maya's original IG page, not the verified one she has now. She had one before that. I am Maya Houston underscore. And this, this IG page had pictures and videos of Marcus Houston, right? And it was basically a fan page for Marcus Houston before she came of age and was actually able to, you know, like openly date. Let's go into Miss Maya Dickey. Maya Dickey. Like, what the fuck? Okay, we back on. I don't know why that shit just did it. But it says, if you type in Maya, Mayana Dickey on Google, there's a link to a website called Wikidee. Obviously created, obviously created by somebody with a foot fetish. Now, keep that foot fetish stuff in mind, because I got some on Chris about that. Um, it says, obviously created by someone with a foot fetish. Today, someone created a page for her, and it lists her birthday as 10-7-2000. She has an old page titled I Am Maya Houston underscore and has a set of IG videos titled My Love. This girl was so in love with someone 92 weeks ago, September 2018. And just a month later, guess who's together on 10-8-2018, her 18th birthday. Just a month later, you post. This is why I love social media and celebrities with their... This ain't even celebrity. Y'all, y'all regular people. You showing that you regular a regular person right now at this point. Um, by time stamping, literally internet time stamping, what you been doing? Okay, um, people can put two and two together. We ain't stupid. Okay, you with her on the day she turned eighteen? Cause y'all was counting up to them days, buddy. He was. They both was counting up. Counting up to the day she was legal. Because this is what they said. His other page is Houston81316. Okay. On there, he has a set of IG videos with her in them. The ones with a heart and a sunflower. On 10-7-2018, this is her birthday now, her possible birthday, he posted sunflowers and a smile emoji. And the creepy part is, in the comments, people were talking about the countdown is over and they want to know who this precious woman is. Boom. This is all just allegedly, but even when I went to that original IG page, all of the uh, posts had been deleted. However, the page had actually garnered over 67,000 followers. And so... Even if they try to say, oh, well, it wasn't ran by her, it was fake, it was this, it was that, really, 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 really think. It was basically a fan page. She was obsessed with this man. Almost as if they knew each other during her missing years when she was a teenager and they just made it legal once she was legal. And sir, this is why you are being dragged online. Not just because your wife is so much younger, because this whole situation and everything about you, Houston, is creepy. Everything about Marcus Houston is creepy. Everything about Chris Stokes, who we're going to talk about later, is also creepy. I know you can't judge people based on their looks, or you should not, but he gives Creepster the mi National Missing Children's Facebook page. All you got to do is just type Maya Dickey Missing, and his Facebook page will pop up. And you can see comments, wait, that ain't it. And you can see comments on there going back four and six years. saying it it's not just the youtuber saying it it's not just people on instagram saying it you literally see regular folks 
commenting two, four, and six years ago like, uh, something ain't right about this. She with Marcus Houston now. This is her right here. Mayana Juanita Dickey went missing from Eugene, Oregon on uh, August 2016. So 2023 to 2016, that's what, seven years ago? So she went missing seven years ago. That makes sense now that some of the comments on that Facebook page were like from six years ago. Makes sense. All right. It says last seen alive August 6, 2016. Mayana's birth mother, Paula Harris, lost parental rights in California. And Mayana was adopted in California in 2012. It says Mayana ran away from her home. Okay, okay. So we get we get in the story here. Mayana allegedly ran away from her home in Eugene, Oregon, where it looked like they had the girl on Little House, uh, Little Little House on the Prairie. I don't know what kind of cult had adopted the damn girl. Low key, I ain't gonna lie. I probably would have ran away from the motherfuckers too. But anyway, so they ran away from her home on August 6, 2016, at 8 a.m. It is believed that Mayana is with or traveling to her birth mother, Paula Harris, or maternal grandmother, Barbara Dotson, in California. Eventually, you know, her mom lost rights, which we need to figure out why. She then got adopted, then ended up moving to Oregon, which is all actually very commonplace when kids get adopted. The people typically will move or move out of state to make sure that the relationship between the child and the parent that actually lost their rights, like... To, to, to make sure they don't come fucking kidnap them, even though it still happens. In August of 2016, Maya dipped and wasn't seen since until she turned of age and ended up with Marcus Houston. This whole shit is just weird. And Maya also has a connection with Chris Stokes. Chris Stokes, the, the, the I guess you say music manager, producer, you know, we know him for putting together Immature B2K, but you know what we really know Chris Stokes for besides looking like Trey? We know Chris Stokes, if you even call that Trey, we know Chris Stokes for orchestrating these inappropriate ass photos here. Now, this is the group Immature, I believe. Now, on the internet, and you can go right up to Lipstick Alley and actually find these photos, can't nobody really remember what magazine these came from, but all we know is that that shit looked creepy. That shit looked like grooming on the max. Now, back in the day, little girls would buy magazines, uh, you know, for all of y'all that don't remember the days of magazines and posters, they would get, you know, magazines of their favorite R&B or pop singer. When I think back, that was not a typical photo. Wait a minute. That's not a typical photo that would have been in one of those magazines. Not, you know, maybe you would see your favorite singer, maybe showing their their uh the band of their underwear, maybe shirtless, maybe shirt open, maybe. But for the most part, it was always like a really innocent picture of whoever the singer was or the rapper or whatever, right? Um, so it was always a pose like this, like this. Like, it was usually very innocent. Maybe a shirt off. Maybe. But not no bull. Not no bull. Not, not no. Not no. Not, not no bullshit like this. Really looks like this was supposed to be meant for private consumption only. Right? Think about it. These are teenagers on some grandmama ass bed, grandmama ass blankets, all laid up. Like, why? I guess my biggest question to all of that shit would be why. But what, what Chris Stokes, aka Chris Stokes, is most known for is allegedly molesting members of B2K. And this is via Raz B. It's right. alleged that Maya was taken in by Chris Stokes during those years that she was missing until she actually turned 18. Because you gotta rem you gotta really think. Once you start digging through these articles, you could go back to US Weekly or even Rolling Stone, who did pieces on Marcus and Maya, after they got married, Marcus has always maintained that he actually met Maya through Chris's daughter, Chrissy Morales. Was that in September 2020, you know, when Maya and Marcus got married, uh, Chris walked her down the aisle, right? He literally took the place of her father. And so nobody would do this unless they had a rapport with you. And so how did a girl who was allegedly missing build this rapport of a man that she just met? Like, it's, it, none of this shit is making sense. But when you really look at it, 
and I ain't able to say it, say it, it makes sense. So I'm going to read this to you. It says, you don't have to be my blood to be the one I call dad. You're just the best father figure and best friend anyone could ask for. I thank Jehovah for such an amazing honor of you. P.S. Excuse my crying baby face. That was on her wedding day right there. When I looked at the Rolling Stone interview from December 2021, Maya actually stated that she considers him her spiritual father, right? Which means Chris is the one that most likely introduced her to the Jehovah's Witness religion, a.k.a. lifestyle. Some people call it a cult, whatever you want to call it. And we can't forget that Marcus Houston is a Jehovah's Witness. And so it all starts to tie together the more and more you think about it now. And... The story gets darker and deeper, and these are things we already know, but these are things that I always want you to keep in your head, right? And so I said, well, let's go back a phone call between Quentin Tarver and Raz B from over 10, 15 years ago via World Star Hip Hop. Down the floor. Chris is on the band. Marcus was right there next to me. When he tried to penetrate me, and then I told him I was bleeding. I said, it hurts. Wow, what the fuck? It hurt, dude. It hurt. It hurt me. I'm a kid. So he was like telling me that it's okay. I was like, okay, it's okay. He put his dick in my booty hole, bro. And fuck me, my nigga. With Chris laying on the bed. Watching with the big ass polo, teddy bear, and the big ass pillows on the bed. Fucking me. And watching. That shit not cool, bro. Are you talking about the same room with the burgundy stuff in there? Was the, at the time we was in the room, was did that was the couch like red burgundy, like the burgundy couch? Was it burgundy? No, it was oh, no, blue. It was, it was his bedroom. Chris's room. When I was laying outside the bedroom. I was in Chris's bedroom. He had big eyes, uh, polo pillows, and he had Chris, a polo teddy bear. Got the couch with red a polo shirt on the teddy bear. Mm-hmm. And then I was laying out. Are you talking about? Did Chris have, are you talking about that wooden bed? Chris had that real high wooden bed? Yes, 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 nigga. Yeah, I know about that bed. Hey, on the side of that bed, on the left of it, was that little, was it that little glass jar with the change in it? And the little, like, futon? Oh, my God. Was there a little futon? How, you know, how do you know about that? Because you were younger than me. Huh? How do you know about that? I said, how do you know about that? You were younger than me. So how do you know about that? Quentin, I'm trying to tell you, I walked through the same thing which you walked through. That first time that Marcus ever put his dick in my booty was in that it was in that room too. So Marcus fucked you too? Yeah. Wow. Damn. Oh my god. That happened that happened like I believe that happened like twice. Like once there and then like one time like like in Vegas it was like me, Marcus and, and Chris. And like that shit. I thought Taz. When I told Tane it's about the shit, she didn't believe me. I told her, I said he has a black mole on his left nut. You talking? You talking about? You talking about? You talking about Chris's what? dick? What? You talking about Marcus or Chris's dick? I'm talking about Marcus's dick. Yeah. He has a black mole on his nut. Yeah, he's and he's not circumcised, he and, and he's not circumcised either. Marty Houston is not circumcised, no. Yeah, I know, that's what I'm saying. He's not. And he asked me to suck his dick, I told him no. Oh, I'm gonna do that shit. But he wanted me to. Why Chris laid there and watched? Man, I'm sorry. Me and Marcus ran in the shower. Yeah, Chris did the same shit. With, see, Chris would try to work through the kids and work through Marcus because he already got Marcus at a young age, and he would work through Marcus uh, to, 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 to see. It. Toward, and sick. Man, you sick. You know what? When I, this this is the type of stuff that makes me upset. These celebrities have done their best to scrub videos like they're from the internet, but there is always somebody that has a copy. Damn it, I can find that video where a soldier boy was humping Arab. <laughs>
that's for you, baby. I can find the weird looking videos of Bow Wow. We gon' own the four We gon' own the four And if you don't jump on the bandwagon now, it's a problem. I don't want you to jump on the bandwagon. I can find, listen, if you dig hard enough, you can find all that shit. And so if you listen, in that video from years ago, way before Rasby started actually speaking out, Quentin Tarver is giving you the same story that Raz B had of allegedly Marcus Houston penetrating him while Chris Stokes orchestrated the whole thing. After those videos, I mean, those videos broke the internet back then. Of course, Marcus Houston went on to do interviews to try to, you know, you know, try to, you know, make it seem like Raz was crazy. We do something with Rosenberg called the realness. Okay. So Rosenberg, help us out here. Kick the realness. What we need to know from... <laughs> You know I mean? Okay, well, straight up, your man, uh, your former boy, Raz B, has said crazy things about you, fam. Literally. Again and again. Called you, he called you a pedophile. Yeah, he did. And that is, uh, respond to Raz B calling you a pedophile, man. You got to speak on that. It was a big joke to me. Like, you know, and if you think about it, if you think about the time frames when this guy starts up, it's always around my album coming out, Ooh. my album release, and now my movie release is coming out, so he's talking more and he's he's lying but it's all lies it's all bs and you know i mean he's just these opportunities you're saying like he he only talks when you're about to drop something he jumps on the the fact of he's an attention whore you know and he wants that attention because b2k was huge everybody know how huge b2k was yeah. and it's like when something like that is stripped from you and then you can't get any fame you know you you go to the extreme measures and the dude yeah. is he's psycho so. but he's also mentioning other big time stars like and, Omarion and Chris and you, Brown you gotta and, think about who he's mentioning for yeah. one I don't even think Raz has ever met Chris Brown you know what I'm saying Chris Brown and Raz B have no connection I know Omarion and, Raz, and, and uh, Chris Brown are really cool but alright so that was Marcus Houston back in the mid 2000s at that time when he was trying to put out music and I forgot what album was actually coming out around that time when Marcus did that interview with Hot 97 he was trying to do damage control. And one thing in this industry that they are very good with, all right, is when you bring up the dirty and demonic and pedophilic shit that the, mo that the majority of them are actually into and that this industry and that Hollywood itself is just built off of, period. You can go all the way back to the Shirley Temple days. They always try to say you crazy. That's the first thing they say, you crazy or you on drugs. Quiet. She said she won. She said she was in the right. That bitch did win because she, she showed up. The devil won too. She made sure I would never go for the devil. The devil win. You're on drugs and you end up self deleting or getting into an accident. It's just me to be in the film. Why wasn't I in the film in the first place? Oh, everybody have respect for everybody's family, but don't nobody show no love and respect for me. The house book living in him and his family, I put him in it. But don't nobody, but y'all want to take money out of Raz's pocket and make it seem like I'm the crazy nigga. And them niggas don't want to stand here and back me up, but y'all calling my phone. Like, I'm cool. I don't got nothing against you. I don't got nothing against the boys. But, like, Fizz still to this day never said sorry. You know what I'm saying? Nobody's never really said, Raz, I really got your back. Thank you. Because you know what, Boog, I mean, me and Boog, me and Boog was in a room together. Chris Stokes put us in a room together and made us do stuff together. You feel me? Me and Jarrell, Houston. So it's like I've been protecting people for a long time. I have nothing to lose. I have no one to fear. And it's just it's tacky. And I don't give a fuck about B2K. Fuck B2K. You know what I'm saying? I am B2K. And and if, if shit ever gonna get right, niggas is gonna have to come come clean. Cause you're not gonna live, you're not gonna you're not gonna sweep anything under the rug. I was molested by Chris Stokes and Mark Houston, and that's just that's the truth. Period. Well, my truth, my, my truth is, is the fact that Chris Stokes had me and Jarrell Houston in a room sucking each other's dicks. My truth is that, hold on, hold on, Judy, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. My truth is that Jay Bug had sex with fucking Leslie. You get what I'm saying? So I'm dealing with everybody's blaming, pointing the finger at me, but ain't nobody backing me. So this ain't nothing that you can do. This ain't, have, this don't even have nothing to do with you. I don't, baby, I don't even care about that film. I'm producing The Boogaloo Kid. The movie's already funded, all 8% of the movie. I don't care. I'm not tripping off the movie. I'm talking about the principle, and you know what I'm talking about because you're a God-fearing woman. You know what spiritual warfare we're fighting. But on the principle, you haven't been left out. We just haven't got West Coast anything filmed yet. Everything's been on hold since they've been back. 
Uh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, tri I'm not tripping, but I, I got a problem with Fizz. Fizz, I got a problem with Fizz. What's the problem? I got a problem with Fizz, because Fizz is the first person to take it in this fucking asshole, and he want to make it seem like I'm a motherfucking homo, and like I'm crazy, and like there's a problem, like I did something to him. I never did anything to nobody. Some random, some tapes got out, and we all know what that was about. Obviously, it was in God's will. I just talked to Quinn, and, dude, if you, I just talked to Quinn and, for the first time last night. Oh, my God. Oh my God, Quentin is the same same dude and went through the same shit we walked through. Yeah, yeah, and in Vibe magazine. Wait till you hear his testimony. So I feel bad for Bug. I feel bad for Fizz. I feel bad for Mark. I feel bad for Marcus Houston. I feel bad for Jerome Jones. I feel bad for all these kids that want to sweep this shit under the rug and act like this shit's okay. What Chris Stokes did. I show so much compassion for everyone, but niggas just spit on me enough, and I'm done with it. So I have I, I have respect. Where was every where was everybody four or five years ago? Just shut up, Raz. It's okay. Go 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 over to the meeting. Nobody bullet come to the house with my Okay, so in that video, Raz B was literally speaking his and truth. Unfortunately, um and tragically, Quentin Tarper actually ended up passing away in a car accident in Dallas, Texas, April first of twenty twenty one. So Chris Stokes is gay? I mean, I can't tell you if He's gay. I can tell you that I'm gay, but I don't know if he's gay. I know he likes little boys, and allegedly, that makes you something. And until and unless Marcus Houston and Chris Stokes are gonna address these allegations and address them all head on, I don't want to hear nothing they got to say. I don't care about uh, him and his wife's relationship now. I want to know how y'all met and how long you've been knowing her. Since we talking about her life, where her people at? Where she come from? Why was she missing for so many years? These are the questions that need that needs answering to. When did she come into Chris Stokes' life? See, these are the things we need to know. Not those bullshit ass questions that they was asking on TV One. It is what it is. I had to take us on a trip down memory lane for this video. Let me know down below what you think. Do you agree with Marcus's marriage to this young lady? Is it weird? When older men marry women that are young enough to literally be their children, right? Or does it matter what age bracket, right? So 40 and 20 looks weird, but does 60 and 40 look that bad? Does 70 and 50 look that bad? Like, maybe we need a whole conversation on this. What are your real th thoughts on Chris Stokes? Chris Stokes says he's not a pedo and that he's not gay and that he's married and he has four children. But that doesn't stop anything that doesn't stop anybody from engaging in homosexual or pedophilic activities, right? What do you think about the whole B2K debacle? We, I feel like this comes up every few years. <laughs> and the only one that really addresses this shit and talks about it is Raz B. Now, let me say this too, because it's, it's pertinent, right? Quentin died April 1st, 2021. It's interesting how this is not going viral around that same week that, that you know, around the anniversary of his death. I don't know if y'all believe in spirituality and spirits, but to me, it's something to it. And I just got chills as I was talking about it, which means I'm probably right. So enough of me talking, damn it. Let me know what you think down below. Like, comment, subscribe, share if you care. Email me at stormmonroebusiness at gmail.com if you uh, um, want to advertise product or service or your own YouTube channel for a consult. Um, hit my link down below for my ebooks where I teach people YouTube and I will catch you guys later. Uh, it's storm show. Hey, it's storm show.